Not quite, Celestia said. The glow around her horn brightened briefly. I do know that this is no case of possession, replacement or any sort of malicious action by one of the equus de Berso. I would have noticed something so obvious, and that is not how enforcers act. Then what's wrong with her? Twilight asked. She cringed when Celestia answered with a stern look. It would be too quickly on our part to assume that something wrong has happened, Celestia said. Something obviously has, and the involvement of the Equus de Abyssal is troubling. Let's not forget, however, that Fluttershy is alive right now because of this change. Silence washed over them like another stifling wave of ruined city's foulness. Rainbow Dash actually landed and stared at her hoofs. Twilight put a hoof on Fluttershy's shoulder. Sorry, she said, for not trusting you. It's all right, Twilight, Fluttershy said. I don't really trust me right now. We must focus on more pressing matters, Celestia said. The medical energies around this place have been recently disturbed. Black Rose has clearly gone this way. But we've gone as low as we can go, Applejack said. She tapped the floor with her hoofs. Sounds pretty solid to me. Applejack yelped when golden light fled next to her hoofs. The other huddled closer to the princesses as the light began to trace a circular pattern that spanned nearly the entire floor of the dome. Luna studied the markings and shook her head. Necromantic array, she said. This is bad. Indeed, Celestia said. The array is very old, likely inscribed by the six companions themselves when they frequented this place. Why is that a problem? Twilight asked. Luna's eyes narrowed. The problem, Twilight Sparkle, is that I am not even half the necromancer my brother is. She glanced toward Celestia. And I am better than Big Sister read it. Celestia frowned and looked away. It's a rare gift, she said. One I would not have used if I did have it. Regardless, Luna, you can decipher these things better than I can. What can you tell from them? Luna studied the array for several minutes, following the white circle across a huge space. Unlike her sister, she did wish she had the talent for necromancy. The school was often maligned, sometimes even by its own practitioners, for its manipulation of things like grudge, necrotic energies and life force. But it had its uses, as this difficult array was proving. After what may have been half an hour, she looked towards the others. Oddly enough, this is a form of transport spell, she said. But transportation spells belong to summoning conjurations, Twilight said. Shouldn't Princess Celestia be able to use it easily then? If it was to travel to a more conventional place, it would be, Luna replied. This spell will take its target to the base of the tower. It is a place at the very edge of the abyss created by the foul weapon and will swallow any pony foolish enough to traverse it without preparations. She traced one section of the glowing circle with her hoof. Right here is an incantation for a pact with the power of abyss. With some modification, my sister and I can use it to protect all of you from being swallowed. She didn't mention another detail she noticed, something which she was sure her sister had noticed as well. The circle strongly resembled an eternal heart array. Either the six companions had some outside help making it, or this thing was here even before the old kingdom was built. Oceanus would not have needed this, neither would his strongest servants. What was it for? Don't you mean we? Rarity asked. She laughed nervously and glanced at both Luna and Celestia. The both of you are coming, right? Luna didn't bother hiding the resignation in her tone. We can't. The six of them wizarded at this. With our limited affinity for necromancy, my sister and I will need to work together with this array just to maintain it on the rest of you. If the ritual is interrupted while you are inside the tower, you will be swallowed by the abyss. But, Twilight hesitated and looked toward Celestia. Black Rose and her sons must have taken this path, and the six companions too. How did they... The six companions only needed a more rudimentary form of this spell, Luna said. They had no problem embracing the abyss. That is not a path you would want to take. As for Black Rose, she is a very skilled necromancer in her own right, much more than even most eloquence I know. 
combine that with how this place is reacting to my big brother, it would have been easy for her to pass through here with her thorns. Twilight. Celestia approached her student with a smile and a hoof on the shoulder. Past this portal you must confront Black Rose and her thorns in the foul weapon's presence. My brother is also within. Find a way to aid him and he will aid you. I'm sorry I cannot go with you, but... The smile widened. I know all of you can do this if you stand together. A tear rolled down Twilight's cheek. She shuddered and her legs looked shaky, but she answered the smile was one of her own. We will, your highness. The six bearers of the element of harmony stood at the center of the circle, while Celestia and Luna occupied opposing points. Are you ready? Luna asked. Twilight nodded grimly. Her friends held hoofs behind her. The circle of light intensified as both sisters focused their magic. There was a flash, the same sort as it would have accompanied a teleportation cycle, and they were gone. Twilight shook her head while her eyes adjusted. For a moment she almost didn't want them to. The old kingdom was an awful enough sight, a ruined testament to the very worst of pony kind, a tomb drowned by both water and wickedness. What nightmare awaited her at the edge of the abyss? When Twilight's vision finally cleared, the next question was, Did we make a mistake? It looked as if they were still in the old kingdom. The walls were seamless grey stone, as if the entire tower had been crafted from a single block. The lighting didn't come close to illuminating the ceiling, or even the entirety of where they were. A spiral stair wound its way up the walls and into the darkness above them, each step wide enough to allow two ponies to walk side by side and rising only few inches at a time. The floor was... There was no floor. They were standing in complete blackness and... She paused. Wait, where were they getting their light anyway? She lifted the front hoof to her face and stared at it. She was emanating a faint white light. Her friends were scattered across the floor, also glowing. I am never going to get used to all these teleportation spells, Applejack said with a groan. The others rose unsteadily behind her. Where are we now? And can't some pony turn on the light? I am so sick of all this darkness. Twilight focused on a light spell. They were in for the fight of their lives, and she didn't want to do it in a place where she barely see a few feet ahead of her. The magic flowed and the spell finished, but no light appeared. Twilight frowned. That was weird. She could feel her globe of light. She moved it around and felt its presence, but the darkness was as pervasive as ever. Sorry, she said. We'll have to make do with this, um, self-illumination? Rarity felt around her forelegs and chest. Oh, my stars, I'm completely luminescent. I knew I was going to shine one day, but not like this. This is the edge of the abyss, huh? Once Rainbow Dash got her bearings, she was immediately airborne. It's not so bad, just more darkness and stone. So what's next for us? Twilight pointed to the stairs. What else is there? We start climbing. Don't fly ahead, Rainbow, it's too dangerous. Hold on there, Applejack said. Why are we going up? And we're supposed to be going down to the blasphemous rift? True, Twilight replied. But there is no downward pass. We climb because there's nowhere else to go. Applejack scratched her head. Well, that doesn't... Girls! Pinkie Pie cried out. She pressed her face against the blackness they were stepping on. Check this out! Twilight looked at the ground. What is it? She asked. Over there! Pinkie Pie tapped at the floor and pointed. They're a long, long way away, but you can see the princesses over there. Twilight squinted and then gasped. There were two ponies at the distance. They were also glowing, making them a bit easier to spot in the darkness. Those were her mentor's mane and tail, now back to their usual flowing colors. The golden circle of light was also easy to see. She thrust a hoof towards them, but the floor blocked her foreleg. Are they... Rarity was also squinting at the two figures. Are they upside down? Pinkie Pie giggled. Yeah, they are! I can see the bottoms of their fancy shoes! Twilight swallowed as she realized something. They're not upside down, she said. 
The others looked to her. Twilight, I can see them too, Applejack said. The wraps are down. No. Twilight tapped the hoof against the floor. Don't you get it? This tower is inverted. The portal we used was the very base of this building. Now we are inside. Pinky tapped the hoof against her face. So that means we're upside down? Twilight nodded. To put it simply, yes. This lowest floor is the highest point of the tower. The more we ascend, the further into the depths we go, Rarity said. Not such a bad grammar after all, Lexarius. Okay, then, Rainbow Dash said. Let's start climbing. Wait. Twilight put a hoof up. Do you hear that? Her ears perked at the very faint, distant sound coming from above them. Whatever it was, it was a long way up. It's just more ghostly sound, Sugar Cube, Applejack said. Just ignore it. No, this one's different. It sounds like some pony's playing some kind of violin. Rarity's eyes narrowed as she listened. No, dear, that's not a violin you're hearing. Her mage blades started floating by her side. It's a cello. Okay, first of all, for everyone who did not listen to my latest update on Fallout Equestria, I want to apologize for splitting this thing into two parts, but I have some technical difficulties right now that prevent me from doing recordings that are longer than 30 minutes. Uh, okay, now let me say things about this chapter. Um, first of all, I wanted to say that Luna is acting strange. I mean, she should tell the others that she feels the influence of Oceanus. Um, because if she doesn't and she suddenly, well, kind of turns on them, that's worse than if they are a little suspicious of her and kind of watch her, watch out for it and kind of try to snap, snap her out of it, maybe. Um, the architecture of the Old Kingdom, on the other hand, is creepy. And I'm not even talking about that pit of rejects. I'm really looking forward to where this is going, and I'm, as always, looking forward to your opinions on this chapter. Sincerely yours, Visual Pony.